podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Um, so welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the, the wonderful, the always wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. And this is episode 128, and we're going to be doing part three and then part four of the best books that you you think Rec- book recommendations book recommendations that's the that's the uh and of course you know i always think about this uh jackie that people could always text in books they'd like us to review and what they think is their most important psychotherapy book or even just a psychotherapy book they like or even a counseling book they like i've read quite a lot yeah. so I probably won't say I've got them, but I'd certainly like to hear from the viewers. Viewers, the wrong word. The people who are listening, or on my YouTube, you know, the YouTube channel, and what books influence them in their lives and their practice. And uh, certainly, I'm more than happy to do a review of it. Absolutely, yeah. It doesn't have to be TA. It could be anything, any of the different disciplines. Yeah, and of course. We can do that, can't we? I mean, I quite like that idea because it would include, you know, what people like themselves. That's it. Because you you know me, Bob. I'm not very academic and I don't like really deep and heavy books. So a lot of the books that I have are either like, you know, information books like TA Today that I used for when I was training or the mm. more from a, a, a the person's perspective of something. Okie dokie, and people who watch me on YouTube, that's not people on podcasts. podcast, um, I've just come back from a three-mile walk, and it's, you know, I've got a bit hot, so hopefully I'm not perspiring too much, but uh, please pardon me. What okay. a lovely vision you are, you're glowing, let's, let's put it that way, <laughs> that's what women are, we don't, we don't sweat, we just glow. Um, so the first book that we're doing is about life scripts, scripts people live. Oh, you've got it there. Claude Steiner, <laughs> yes. The the one thing that comes to mind when I think about Claude Steiner is that he did the Warm Fuzzy, the, the yeah. story around Warm Fuzzy, which is actually in this book. Oh. Yeah. So for the people who perhaps aren't TA therapists uh, and don't know the story of Warm Fuzzies and cold pricklies do you want to just say what you mean by a um a warm fuzzy it, uh, for me and the way that i took it it was lovely it's like a fairy tale and it's all around positive and negative strokes and it, there's a, a, a witch that comes into the village and she kind of talks people into not giving warm fuzzies but to give them cold pricklies instead um but it's all i think the the metaphor behind it is that we should all give positivity to other people and positive recognitions because we don't run out of them and it impacts on the other person and it impacts on us when we give them as well it's just a nice story i thought yeah no i i I think it's a really good story and um one of my favorite shops of all time when i was growing up was woolworths oh yes taking me back to the youth now (laughs) and woolworths in the 1970s um created warm fuzzes Really? Yeah, yeah. And I and I remember in the 80s going to Woolworths and buying lots of warm fuzzies. They were like little, like, um, velvet, um, I don't know if they come teddy bears, but they're like balls, really, but they're very smooth to touch. And I used to give them to my clients. Bob, we need to we need to re revamp that. We need to come up with warm fuzzies. I, I yeah. just love the concept of it. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I used to buy them and give them to my clients and 86 87 88 wars went bust i think mid 90s but i was so pleased to find these you know warm fuzzies a unit of positive social recognition what a wonderful thing for you to do i envisage them to be like a pom-pom Can't yeah you? the little ball that's like what they were like yeah, yeah 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 so i forget what the story we digress came up with. from the book well yeah <laughs> in a way um Claude Steiner, 
who wrote that book in 1974, which you've just got in your hands there, Jackie, he was a very interesting man. He he was what is called in the TA sort of circles, the prodigal son of Eric Byrne. And Eric Byrne was the originator of transaction analysis. Yeah. Now, Claus Steiner, I'm not sure where they met, but um, Eric Byrne took Claude Steiner, and I don't know how, I think Eric Byrne would be in his 50s, 60s, and Steiner much younger, of course. And um, he said to Claude Steiner, finish off your university studies, do your PhD, become a doctor uh, before you actually start being a TA, you know, TA therapist and trainer. So Claude Steiner went off and did that. And uh, he, he was very, very influenced by Eric Byrne. Eric Byrne died in 1970. He was the transaction. He was the originator of transaction analysis, and he um, he sort of he was Claude Steiner wrote this book anyway. Scripps People Live, 1974. I won't say as a homage to Eric Byrne, but certainly uh, it was dedicated to Eric Byrne. Yeah, and it 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 so it is it's covers lots and lots of things about the script, which is is one of the basics of transactional analysis, that we have a life script and it's formed before the age of seven. Um, yeah, I just find it good to dip in and out of again. It's not a book that I've read from cover to cover. No, but uh, that book particularly um, is famous, not just because Claude Steiner wrote it, but he talked about different types of scripts. So the idea of script, as you mentioned, Eric Byrne's idea of script anyway, is that there's an unconscious life plan which you create in childhood at the beginning, middle, and end. So it's like a life plan. Now, Eric Byrne did, you're quite right, Eric Byrne, like Freud, um, talked about that we develop these unconscious life plans at a really basic level, like I'm okay, you're okay, I'm not okay, other people are okay at a very, very uh, rudimentary level, before the age of five and six. Now, Steiner, in his book, carries on that same theme. And he also talks about different types of scripts, mindful scripts, banal scripts, harmatic scripts, that we actually start developing in life. Uh, he also talks about a script questionnaire. It's a very good for people who want to know or have an inter introductory idea of what scripts are yeah and also very good for the students of ta to look a little bit more in depth of the idea of scripts i like it still is probably i think you i don't know if you would disagree with me or not but i think it's still probably the most accessible book uh in terms of reading an introduction into scripts uh that we still have in the the the, the literature of the ta world yeah and it's extensive. The stuff that's in here, I'm just looking at the the contents now. It's mm. it's extensive. Do you know what I mean? The the information that's in here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it goes it goes right into people's scripts, harmatic scripts, yeah. mindless scripts, um, how they are created, you know, how they're played out in life. Um, yes, it's a very extensive book, isn't it? Script questionnaire is that script matrix is in there as well. So. It's very good on two parts for people wanting to understand the concept of script for the first time because it's a very accessible, easy book that's written. And also, I think it's a very interesting book for people who want to take the idea of script and the idea of script matrix further. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, it's just a basic, it's the basis to build on it and to use in therapy. Oh, you're right. And I think, I think. Like, uh, yeah, I think probably true. That if you look at or ask most people who are TA therapists what books they have, yeah. the two or three probably they will have bought before others is Games People Play, which is a very famous Eric Byrne book. Yeah. And they'll probably have scripts people live on their bookshelf as well. Yeah. And that's because... Not only is it been very um, straightforward for people to understand, but if we look at the four cornerstones of transaction analysis model as a whole, you've got ego states, 
you've got transaction analysis proper, you've got games, and you've got script. Yeah. So if people want to really understand that, one of those cornerstones of transaction analysis, this probably is the book for them with regards to script. I mean, you've got it, haven't you, on your yeah, bookshelf? Absolutely, yeah. And it's something I was I was talking to some people over the weekend on a course that I was running, and I was talking about scripts, and it's something that they'd never heard of before. No. Yeah. What so, sort of what sort of work What sort of workshop were you doing? It was not it was the equine guided therapy that we do. So it was just like the general public that were coming in. That obviously I was introducing to some transactional analysis stuff, and I, I spoke about you know the pack system and parent ego, parent adult and child. But then went on to look at you know our scripty stuff, mm. but they'd never heard of it. Wow. Yeah, wow. so what I was doing was talking about, you know, our life story and called it that rather than our script. Mm. And, that you know, we 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 come up with this, we make these decisions at a really young age and yet we're still living our life by them as adults. Yeah, there are. Another way of looking at it is it's like a, a frame of reference. Yeah. In, a, in another language, I was thinking. Yeah. We create a frame of reference often as in terms of survival, if you like, um, or as a way of making sense of the world about ourselves and other people. And we tend to follow that frame of reference, that life story, that life script, and enact it out in the people we have around ourselves, relationships, our professional life. Yeah. And if it serves us well, that's absolutely fine. And sometimes that life story frame of reference is needs updating. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what I was saying to them. You know, parts of my life script are absolutely fine. Other parts of mine I want to change. And I think the reason why it came up and why I started talking about it was because, you know, the ladies on this particular course were pushing themselves out of their comfort zone by being around horses. You know, some of them had bad experiences. So I was saying about... You know, one of the things that we can do when we're stepping out of our script, we feel like we're coming out of our comfort zone. We know what goes on in our script, but when we step out of it, that's sometimes when we can start to feel anxious or have a bit of a wobble. But for me, that's a good thing. As a psychotherapist, when my clients are having a wobble, as I call it, for me, they're stepping out of the script. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with me more. And it's uh, a... It's many additions to this book, by the way, but the first edition of 1974, Claude Steiner, Scripts People Live. If people don't know much about TA, want an introduction to the idea of what we're talking about here, life story or script is a good book to read. And for students of TA, it's a good book to take um, further detail of script and take the idea of script further. So it's one I would... Um, really endorse um, and it's a book I, I've had for many many years on my yeah. shelf and dipped into because it's a bit like a textbook yes yeah yeah it is. It, it is it's very thorough in in how it breaks it down and how it looks at the different scripts and like you said there's a relationship script there's a script for pretty much everything <laughs> yeah and there's core ones but he goes into, I like his chapter on harmatic scripts. I like his chapter on mindless scripts. And it it certainly is a, a book I would endorse for anybody interested in psychotherapy in general and particularly TA. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So it's sure. going to go back up on my bookshelf then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what we're going to be talking about in the next episode is the art and science of relationships. Yeah, just before, yeah, we are, which is another one of my favourite books. Just on this, though, <laughs> the book about script. What I said was that earlier on in the podcast was that Thord Steiner was what we call in the TA community, prodigal son of Eric Byrne, and Eric Byrne was the, you know, the creative transactional analyst. And when I was thinking with you, and I probably didn't say to you this either online or offline, I was thinking what books 
can, do we review? And I sent you a lot of books. Now, Eric Byrne himself wrote six central books, but only six, which are, which are the first major book, which is called Transaction Analysis Psychotherapy, Eric Byrne, 1961. Nine, then the book that took TA to stardom, really, um, which was in 90, which was in uh, seven, it was in, so in 1964, games people play. That really took TA up to stardom, I think. And a book I really like, his third book, which is Principles of Group Treatment, which talks about how you use TA practically in the clinical sense, which I recommend for anyone who's interested in working practically with TA in the clinical Bob, world. Sorry, Bob. Principles of? Principles of Group Treatment, 1967, by Eric Byrne. These are the lexicon of Eric and Byrne's books that makes up the TA theories, if you like. I mean, there's many other books after he died which are written on TA, but these are the Eric Byrne books. That book, which I've just said, Principles of Group Treatment, is a fantastic book because in that book he starts talking about how to use the method, the practicalities of TA for the first time in a clinical room. Before that, it was games people play, or and then there's the, the major theories of uh, TA in his first book in 1961. But after Principles of Group Treatment, two other books came along just before he died. He died in 1970 on Carmel Beach of a double heart attack. Just before he died, he'd finished off a book on script, actually, um, which was called what do you say after you say hello? And it's a very easy book to read, and it's about script. It's about all about script theory. Yeah. Very different from the course standard book I've just talked about. Yeah. And then he, then he wrote another book, which he was, which was finished off posthumously, if that's the word, um, called Sex and Human Loving, and that came out in 1970. Three quarters of it was written. Um, when he died, he just finished what you say after you say hello, but he was writing simultaneously this book on relationships, which he calls sex and human loving. Yeah. Um, then he died, I think it was three quarters away, and then it was finished off by other people. And those are the major Eric Byrne five books. And then there was another book, I think it was 1963, but I never actually, I, I opened the opened the first few pages, but as I'm not into TA and organizations particularly, I didn't read it. It was called Di Power and Dynamics of, uh, of Organi in Organizations. So I've not read that particularly. All those books were written. Steiner, when he wrote this major book on script, he, paid, he pays homage. I don't know if it's in that book, but certainly an article I've written of how these lexicon of books that Eric Byrne wrote influenced his life but i would say the best script book isn't the book what you say after you say hello written by eric Byrne. it's this book yeah but so i just want to say i think even the it's dedicated to eric Byrne. oh eric Byrne, watching down will be so proud of course steiner yeah it, it says um i dedicate this book to eric Byrne, teacher friend father brother uh, that says it all. Here we are. Yeah. Of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So please think about buying it or at least looking it up on Google. It's a fabulous book. Okay. So the next one we're doing is the art and science of relationships in the next podcast, Bob. Yeah. Now, this book. Don't talk about this book now. We'll wait till the next podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> switch, switch me off. You'll have to wait for the next time. Yes, listen in for the next one. Until next time, Bob. Speak soon. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode. <laughs>